A progressive group is planning to launch a public pressure campaign to block President Joe Biden's renomination in 2024. The effort, which is being led by Roots Action, is the same group that worked in 2020 to persuade progressives to support Joe Biden. Roots Actions has plans to spend six figures on a hashtag Don't Run Joe campaign with digital ads starting in early no nominating states on November 9th. Don't Run Joe. Uh, interesting. I, I love to see it. Look, it's remarkable yeah. to me that the conversation right now that we're having about Joe Biden, whether or not his age and mental fitness is a concern, all of the teleprompter gaffes, which I have some empathy for, in this professional capacity, but have really gone off the rails of late. The substantive issues with him being unwilling to use his executive authority, no matter how dire the situation is for Democrats and these key issues like abortion. It's, it's really interesting to me that we are only just now having the conversation publicly in the Democratic Party that the left has been having since 2020. This is a group that apparently was advocating for progressives to vote for Biden in 2020. Wouldn't have been my take, but here we are. They finally have figured out that there's a such thing called leverage and maybe they should use it to get a candidate on the ballot who is not going to damn us. Is, it's not going to damn the Democrats to a loss to a, a Donald Trump or a Ron DeSantis. Look at these polls. I am looking at the polls. So my difficulty, though, is is in imagining that even if we could somehow have Biden not be the candidate in 2024, which seems already like a two percent chance mm -hmm. in, in my view he so he's not going to be defeated in like a primary that this is not going to happen even he would have to decide not to run he would have to decide not to run. i mean the only the the most recent precedent for this is right like 1968 uh, of a of a, a a sitting president not being able to be the nominee of his party because of his unpopularity we're, we're going back to a different political era it would be so unprecedented in the modern time i guess it's not impossible it is very hard Robbie, to imagine. 64% of Democrats want right. someone other than Joe Biden to be the nominee. I understand it's going to be an uphill battle. I understand that whoever were to replace him would lose the power of the incumbency and all of the advantages that are built in, and that Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis both would be formidable adversaries. However, does Biden stand a chance at all with 64% of his own party not wanting him to run? I mean, he, he stands a chance against Donald Trump is what we is what the polling seems to suggest, and he could say he is the man who defeated Donald Trump. Yeah, but that was before, and this is yeah, now. Was before. And to many Americans, the, the, the fact of the matter is that Donald Trump under Donald Trump, we got stimulus checks, paused student debt relief, and, you know, under Joe Biden, we saw a reneging on the promise of the $2,000 checks. He's constantly threatening to end the student debt moratorium. You know, they, we have high inflation and high gas prices, which are being attributed to him rightly or wrongly. We have a war in Ukraine. And for many people, even if they were willing to vote for Joe Biden because it seemed like Donald Trump needed to be stopped. Now, with time passing, Donald Trump's in the rear view mirror. He's not on Twitter anymore antagonizing people. I think a lot of folks are going to be either disgruntled enough to stay at home or, frankly, not as terrified about the prospect of a Joe Biden candidacy, presidency. Well, I can absolutely. Oh, sorry, the Donald Trump presidency. Right, which is why he's going to have a, this is going to, he's going to have a hard time uh, being reelected in a general. I think in either case, uh, he's, Certainly, Don I think Donald Trump is a more favorable matchup for, for Joe Biden. I think the Ron DeSantis matchup can basically like christen President DeSantis at this point. But so I understand the, the impulse to want to swap him with someone else. It's, but there is no obvious other person. There's no one. You're, I mean, you're talking, you're well, not wrong to focus is. on the issues. But for so many, it's pers people, it's personality based. And I don't think there is someone as unpopular as Joe Biden is. Who is the more popular figure? It's. I, I don't like this, and I want the leftists watching me to understand that I'm saying this with rising bile in my throat. <laughs> but I, I think that the reason that there is all of this robust conversation now about an alternative to Biden is because people are coalescing around Pete. Oh. I think it's Pete. You saw this glowing praise he got for saying some pretty that. basic anodyne. Very Look, it was a basic good response, things. But like, that's what you should expect baseline from a member of your administration and responding to a question, line of question like that on Fox News. He was responding as uh, for people who didn't watch the uh, sec uh, sec uh, transportation secretary to some questions about um, uh, airline travel and the like. He did. He gave good answers. 
But, but now people are really willing to coordinate him as president. I think that they're open to having a conversation about not running Joe Biden mm -hmm. in part because That's he's staging a, so an opportunity. I, I am not a leftist, so I don't have any like knee jerk, like def default opposition to Pete Buttigieg. Um, so I'm just looking at his actual record as transportation secretary. He seems to be presiding over the most like <laughs> screwed up, like awful. I, I, I want to just like throw out words I'm not allowed to say on like it is so <laughs> messed up how air travel is right now. I'm not. That's not all his fault, but he doesn't seem to be. He actually doesn't seem to be handling it very substantively well at all. Um, his answer right to that tweet or whatever he got called out for it was fine, but. He, he is not doing a good, things are bad right now. Like air travel is more messed up than it has ever been since 9-11. Right. And he's in charge of it right now. So I, it's, fa it's crazy to me. Maybe, it's, maybe Democrats are just like this. Like, yeah, who, how can we make things worse for ourselves? Yes, how let's put forward is, is the worse? guy presiding over a massive disaster right now. But at the end of the day, it's Joe Biden's administration. And I'm not yeah. Liz Smith. But if I were uh, Pete's uh, comms director, I might say something like, look, Pete Buttigieg has worked as hard as he could and that as much as he could within the authority of an administration where the buck ultimately started with Joe, stopped with Joe Biden. And if he were to mount his own campaign against Joe Biden, I would expect him to highlight and contrast what he would have done if he were not having to operate within the guardrails of the Biden administration and let Joe Biden say, well, it wasn't my fault, it was Pete's fault. And let then J Pete Buttigieg say, when I served, we learned that the, the leader had to take authority ultimately for what happened. And it's disappointing to me that Joe Biden won't take authority, take, take accountability for what happened underneath his own administration and try to pass it off on other people. I won't do that when I'm president of the United States of America. Hmm. The thing about Pete Buttigieg is he is good at saying words. He's good at saying words. And to many Democrats, the technocratic Democratic Party right. who think that going to X and Y and Z school is the be all end all, someone like Pete Buttigieg, one, does present a much more positive alternative to Joe Biden. He's younger, he's more able, he doesn't embarrass people constantly, all of those things. He's the representational value of him being the first openly gay president, all of those things I think will genuinely appeal to a lot of folks. The left is not going to be happy, but it will genuinely appeal to a lot of folks. Yeah. No, I agree with that. Well, former Obama administration alum and presidential candidate Julian Castro gave his opinion on what he expects to see of Joe Biden in 2024. Let's take a look. I don't believe that he's going to run again. I think that he's always seen himself as, as a bridge uh, to what comes next and that he'll stick to that. Are you available? Ultimately. I have no intention of running for any <laughs> Let's make some news here tonight. Let's make some but news. I, don't think, I don't believe that he's going to run again. Wow. He said he has no we're, intention. We're, we're, wow. So that, that was a significant remark. This is the first example, to my knowledge, of someone with some actual like, political knowledge and not just like wild speculation, but asserting that. I don't think that's true, but this is the first person with some credibility to make that claim. Well, it, it, the gut, it seems obvious to me that the gloves are off. These are yeah. conversations that could have been happening all of this time, but just now we're having all of this media coverage on the possibility of Biden not running again, Kamala being a disaster. Remember, Castro, when he was running in the primary, was one of the few people, he and um, Booker, both made really subtle, relatively tepid comments following one of the debates during which Joe Biden did a gaffe saying, I'm not sure if he is cognitively or because of his age or whatever up to the task. After they each said those comments in the spin room after the debate, it was over for them. They were like, not on the debate stage again, I don't think. Their campaigns were over. There was a lot of backlash from the Democratic Party. It was clear, the message was clear, you are not allowed to impeach Joe Biden's cognitive ability. My main takeaway from those debates was how little they mattered because Biden was terrible. In, he was the worst by far in every single one. Well, and, yeah. it, and, then, and he easily just marched to victory. But no, that's not exactly <laughs> true. Remember, he lost the first four primaries right. badly, right. like fifth place badly in some right. of those contests. What saved him we was the corporate who Democratic Iowa. Party. still counting, I guess, but a joke, joke about it. I know that. who won Iowa, and that's why I won't be voting for Pete Buttigieg for President of the United States of America, because, you know, that kind of unscrupulous behavior is not exactly what I'm looking for in a national Hopefully leader. we're allowed on YouTube to cast aspersions <laughs> on Iowa's uh, uh, caucus process. Um, I don't know if that yeah. uh, that's yeah. violates any kind of YouTube but look, rule. That's, but. That's, I, just, I bring that up just to say that 
Castro, he fell in line during the primary when he was told to stop talking about Joe Biden. And the fact that he is so publicly talking about Joe Biden running right now suggests to me that there is a real possibility of that happening. And at the very least, he's not fearful of the blowback from the Democratic Party to be openly having that conversation, which suggests to me that there is some part of the Democratic Party establishment that is not 100% behind a second Biden term. Okay, I think Castro saying it makes it like 2% likely to 3% <laughs> likely. Fair enough. But uh, it's interesting. Tomorrow on Rising, we'll be back with friends of the show, Jordan Cheriton and Denise Long to weigh in on the big news of the day. You don't want to miss it. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while on the go, we are now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye, everybody.